Today we're going over the top 10 abandoned places in Ohio. There are hundreds if not thousands of abandoned places in Ohio, so make sure you like it if you want to see a part 2. Today the list is going to start easy and the spots are going to get cooler and cooler as the list goes on. I must say this for legal reasons, but I do not recommend going to any of these places. Trespassing is illegal and you can be punished to the full extent of the law. With that being said, the first spot on our list is Cooley Hotel in Newcomerstown. John W. Cooley began construction on the four-story Cooley Hotel on West Canal Street in Newcomerstown in late 1929, which was to include 44 sleeping rooms, a coffee shop, barber, kitchen, private dining rooms, and public toilets. Although the Cooley Hotel was finished in late 1930 at the cost of $150,000, the interior was never outfitted because of financial considerations. The show of the Cooley Hotel was sold at sheriff's sale to Charles Loader for $26,000 on January 17, 1931. The Newcomerstown Historical Society purchased the Cooley Building in August 1976 to use it as a Newcomerstown Cultural and Study Center adjacent to the Temperance Tavern Museum. After years of vacancy, the Cooley Hotel, never used for its intended purpose, became abandoned. United Theological Seminary in Dayton the General Conference of the Church of the United Brethren in Christ voted to create and fund a seminary in Dayton in, in 1869. The denomination's publishing house was already located in the city, making it an ideal location for an academy. The school opened as the Union Biblical Seminary on October 11, 1871. The first permanent building for the seminary was a three-story brick building located on five acres of land at a First Street and Uslid Avenue. It contained a chapel, library, office, full recreation rooms, and 16 furnished dormitories. Costing $12,000 to build and equip, it was built upon land donated by John Kemp, the first general agent of the seminary. For years, by October 2014, the former seminary worship center was listed for sale, yet has remained abandoned. Cleveland Masonic Temple in Cleveland. There is a three-story abandoned building in southeast Cleveland, Ohio, which once functioned as a Masonic temple. On February 1, 1916, a contract was signed for the construction of the temple, which was to have a concrete foundation imposing monolithic brick walls, and the construction was completed just a year later in 1917. The building had three floors, which featured tiled floors and Partitions. The cost of building the temple was $65,000, which would equate to $1.3 million today. On May 31, 1917, the Masons held their first meeting in this building. For 52 years, the building served its purpose as a meeting house. However, after a while, the cost of repair and maintenance of the building began to grow. In addition, the lack of safe parking in the nearby area was considered a major drawback. A decision was made in the spring of 1969 to put the temple up for sale. After the Masons relocated, the building was still used for several years for various undocumented purposes. However, in 1984, it closed its doors forever and became abandoned. Caesar Creek Township in Xenia. The building was constructed as a high school in 1908 and began serving elementary students in 1927. A small addition was added in 1957 that included two classrooms, two indoor restrooms, and a combination gymnasium and auditorium. Caesar Creek closed in 1967 and was sold to George Grabsby, a local farmer. A minister attempted to convert the school into a private residence in 1969, but was unsuccessful in his attempts due to the local zoning code. But since then, the building has been sitting abandoned. AT&T Long Line Towers in Mechanicsburg The AT&T Long Line Networks featured a system of microwave relay towers that transmitted information across the United States. Built in the early 1950s, the line of sight network conveyed analog data, such as phone conversations and television signals, through towers that were spaced 30 to 40 miles apart. It was also designed to be resistant to the pressure wave from a nuclear blast. The Long Line's network was rendered obsolete with the introduction of fiber optic communication lines, satellites, and wireless internet. Cleveland Aquarium in Gordon Park. The project came to fruition by the Cleveland Aquarium Society, the City of Cleveland, and the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. The aquarium was originally located in Gordon Park's bathhouse, which had been built a decade earlier. In 1943, Cleveland Museum of Natural History converted it into a trail slide museum containing displays of local flora, fauna, and fish. It closed in 1953 when the Cleveland Memorial Shoreway was constructed through the park. The new facility operated under the Natural History Museum, featured 50 freshwater and marine exhibits, and included sharks, swordfish, sawfish, seahorses, eels, squid, octopus, and coral. The building, however, was small. Despite large crowds, the aquarium experienced fiscal deficits. The museum requested an admission increase, which required a city council override of a mayoral veto in 1979. Structural problems with the aquarium forced the closure of the building to the public in June 1985. It ceased operations altogether on April 1, 1986, when its exhibits were moved to the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. Knox County Infirmary in Bangs. The formation of the Knox County Infirmary came in June 1840 
1942 when the county commissioners Thomas Axtell, Christopher Wolf, and Thomas Wade acquired 132 acres in Liberty Township for $3,300. Davidson and J.R. Clark repaired and expanded the buildings on what was the Bricker Farm for the first county courthouse and infirmary. A large facility was soon needed, and on May 12, 1874, the directors of the infirmary petitioned the county for a new structure. On May 15th, Tinsley and Company of the Columbus was hired to furnish plans for a new building that was not to exceed $50,000. After some work was completed, it became evident that it would not be finished at budget. Tinsley and Company secured the building from the elements and convinced the county to take the contract off their hands for $28,000 for the materials used and the labor performed. Work under the county was expedited and the new building was opened in September 1877 at the cost of $83,000. The new 90,000 square foot four-story Italian styled infirmary featured 100 rooms and a 65 foot high tower. It also had three water tanks on the upper floor, containing 40 barrels of water each and a steam power plant. The complex measured 175 feet by 127 feet, could service 125 residents from a four county region. However, substandard conditions forced the Knox County Infirmary to close in 1957. Rubber Bowl and Akron The University of Akron initially a feasibility study for a new stadium in 2003. The Rubber Bowl was aging, requiring a significant rehabilitation and costly upgrades. It was also far removed from campus, which depressed sales of tickets to Zips games. On August 1, 2007, the university's boards of trustees approved the financing and construction plans for a new stadium. The last game in the Rubber Bowl, the Zips 324th, was hosted on November 13, 2008 against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills defeated the Zips in four overtimes in front of a crowd of 18,000 people. After the conclusion of the game, current and former players and coaches were honored on the field. Terrace Plaza Hotel in Cincinnati. Built in 1943 to 1948, it's a landmark of the early modern movement in Cincinnati. When the Terrace Plaza opened, it was widely acclaimed as a modernist masterpiece. The first international style hotel and one of the first post-war hotels built in America, the building is a superb and an innovative synthesis of modern art and architecture. It was the first major building by Skidmore Owings and Merrill Architects and the first of their works to be published widely in architecture and popular magazines. The mixed-use complex combined hotel, offices, and retail space under one roof. Its mixed-use program included retail at a street level, two department stores on floors 2 to 7, a hotel lobby on the 8th floor, and a slender hotel tower from the 9th to 19th floor. A cantilevered circular restaurant perches daring over the north wall. All hotel furnishings were custom-designed, and the hotel was filled with modern art commissioned for the building. The terrace was designed by Natalie DeBlois, pioneering woman architect. After years of decline, the Crown Plaza Hotel closed in 2008, leaving just three street-level stores open. The building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2017. The deteriorated property was named one of America's most endangered historic places by the National Trust for Historic Preservation in 2020. Woodcliffe Condominiums and Golf Center in Whitehall. A Florida-based developer is expected to invest around $250 million to a mixed-use development at the northeast corner of Whitehall, according to the city's development director Zach Woodruff. The developer's agreement, expected to be finalized by the end of August, will outline the first of three phases development for the 50-acre parcel, which includes the abandoned Woodcliffe Condominiums and the former Four Seasons Golf Center. The 50-acre site includes 37 areas on which Woodruff Condominium sits. Another 13 acres is the former site of Four Seasons Golf Center. The city purchased Woodcliffe Condominiums, a 317-unit complex, in 2019 for $10.3 million after its multiple owners voted to sell the property to the city following a court order in 2018 that the property be sold. The property had been the subject of property code violation complaints the city filed in the Environmental Division of Franklin County Municipal Court dating back to 2007. Although many details are yet to be put to paper, Woodruff said the development will include anywhere from 600 to 1,000 residential units of which 20% will be workforce housing. Demolition of more than 300 vacant units on the 35-acre site is expected to begin in early 2021. So guys, those are the top 10 abandoned places in Ohio. Make sure you like and comment if you want to see a part two. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more. Peace.